Hey friend, in this video, I'm going to share with you how to edit CSS in Squarespace. This video is meant to be the ultimate kickstart guide for anyone looking to get started with CSS. So let's hop in. To understand CSS, we first need to understand the way in which websites are structured. Generally, there are three different coding languages that make up the internet, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. HTML is like the building blocks of the internet. HTML explains what needs to be on the page and where it needs to link, but it also lacks any sort of design style, so HTML by itself is just kind of boring. CSS, also known as cascading style sheets, is code used on the internet to give your website design and style. CSS makes everything look pretty. It's kind of like one of those filters in Snapchat. And finally, JavaScript, which is all about the interactivity of your website. With JavaScript, you can do animation and special features that would be basically impossible with HTML and CSS alone. For the purposes of this video, we're going to exclusively focus on CSS and how it relates to Squarespace. Well, to get started, we should talk about the way in which Squarespace renders design styles. Squarespace actually allows users to customize your site's style sheet by hand without editing a line of code. These adjustments are made in the design menu. From the menu, you can adjust things like your text size, color, button type, and more. Squarespace has done an incredible job with making this menu user-friendly, and it's really all you need to make an incredible looking website. However, you are limited in this design menu to just the options Squarespace allows you to edit. So if you're watching this video, you probably want to go a little deeper with your technical understanding. For that, we'll take a look at a super secret custom CSS menu. To access the custom CSS menu, just go to design and click custom CSS. This is the menu that will allow you to change the CSS on your website. So for our example, if we dropped in this quick code, all of our H3s across our entire site would turn red. There are also two other places that you can edit CSS in Squarespace. The first is on an individual page. For example, let's say that you just want to change the headings on a certain page to be red and not your entire website. Well, simply navigate to the page, click the settings wheel, go to advanced and you'll see a code injection point. And I should also note that this feature will only work for people on a business or commerce plan. Now, because this code is going to be inside the specific page, instead of the style sheet for your entire website, you need to add in a style tag, which looks like this, greater than, style, less than, and then add in the CSS code, and then add in a style tag with a greater than symbol, and then a forward slash, and then the word style, and then close it out with a less than symbol. So in this instance, our headings on just the specific page will be changed and not the entire website. And the last way to edit CSS is with an inline code block. This is the best way to edit the code of an individual page, product, or blog post. And this feature is actually available on the personal plan. So if you don't have a commerce or business plan, this can be a workaround to the header code injection style that we mentioned just a second ago. To add in a code block, just add the code block to the top of your page. Add in the style tag, drop in your CSS, and then add in the style closing tag. Now, this CSS will apply to all of the code below your custom code block. Now that we know where the CSS code can be used, it's time to actually learn how CSS works. But before we get to the nuts and bolts, I want to share a tool that is going to be your new best friend, Google Chrome. If you're serious about editing with CSS, you want to install Google Chrome on your computer. It has some developer tools that makes it super easy to edit and dissect CSS on your website. So go ahead and add it to your computer. I'll wait. Okay, so CSS has four different element types that you need to know about. Selectors, declarations, properties, and values. Let's talk about each one and how they work. Selectors literally select what will be styled through your CSS code. There are three main different types of selectors, type, 
class, and ID selectors. Type selectors will select every instance of that type on your website. For example, h2s, p tags, images, etc. In Google Chrome, you can right click on any element on your website and hit inspect to see what type is being modified. The type is always listed immediately after the opening bracket. The only exception to this is a div tag, which actually works more like a bucket that holds things. So you can just ignore those for now. So in our example here, we can find the h2 tag, copy the element type, and insert some code to change the background color. Selectors can also target classes, which can be thought of as a group that can house multiple elements. For example, a class could affect only the top headers of a page, or any text block that is centered across your entire website. You can always find a class by looking for the class equal sign text in the code. To edit a class, type in a period and then paste the class name. Now you can insert your CSS code again to adjust the class styling. You can also target specific types of elements inside of a class. So for example, if you wanted to adjust the h3s inside of this class, you could just type in h3 here. Just add in a space and type in the type you want to target. The final selector type that we are going to talk about is the ID selector. Every single piece of media on your site has a specific ID. To find the ID, just look for the ID tag in the code that starts with the word block. Block ID selectors are targeted with a hashtag in your code. There's also a fantastic Squarespace block ID extension in Chrome that you can use to quickly identify block IDs on your page. Just click the extension and you can easily identify and copy the blocks you are trying to modify. You can also target multiple selectors by adding in a comma. This also applies to type selectors that are nested inside of classes. Now that we've talked about selectors, let's move on to declarations. Declarations are simply curly brackets that tell Squarespace your CSS code is starting and ending. You will create a new declaration each time you want to target something different. As a result, it's very likely that you will have multiple declarations listed out in your CSS code block. Now let's move on to talking about properties. The property tag tells your CSS what style you're going to change. Properties are always defined and then end with a colon. There are about 200 different properties that you can adjust in CSS, and it all depends on what you are trying to change. Some of the more common properties include background, color, and text align, but there are plenty more to learn. In a single CSS declaration, you can have multiple properties. And that transitions us to our final CSS element, values. A value is literally the value of a property. So if you had a property that was font size, you might have a value of 30 pixels. Or if you have a property of color, you might have a value of blue. Some properties have multiple values, which are separated by a space, while other properties can hold a single value. It just depends on the type of property you are trying to edit. Once you've defined all of a property's values, you can put in a simple semicolon. For more, click the link below to find a helpful resource that defines properties and values that you can use as a reference. Sometimes when you type in a value, nothing may change. This is mainly because of the order in which things are being read via the code on your site. To fix this problem, just type in exclamation point and then the word important at the end of your value before the semicolon. This will tell Squarespace that this CSS adjustment is more important than the other changes that may be affecting your code. When you're working with CSS on a website, it's usually best to add in comments that you can reference in the future to properly understand what changes you have made. To add in a single line comment, just put two forward slashes and then type in your comment. You can also do a multi-line comment with forward slash and then a star, and then just type in your comment and then add in a star and then a forward slash at the end of your comment. So that's the basics of CSS. Now I want to show you the exact workflow that I would use to edit CSS in Squarespace. Okay, so let's say you want to update the background of all of the H1s across your entire website. Well, to do that, all you would do is go to the CSS section of your Squarespace site. You can type in H1, open brackets, and I'll type in background, colon, we'll say gray, and put in a semicolon. 
So now if you go to any other page on your website, any H1 will now have a gray background. So that's how to edit a single property. Okay, so now let's edit a class. Now let's say that we want any part of our website that has content in it to have a gray background. Well, to do that, what we're gonna do is right click and go to inspect. And what I'm looking for is the class that contains any objects that have content in them. So I'm gonna scrub through and you can see that there are different classes here, uh, div classes set up for different sizes of blocks and collections of blocks inside of our website. Now this one right here says content and it has all of our content in there. So I think that's the one we're looking for. So I'm gonna copy content and I'm gonna go over here to our custom CSS. I'm gonna type in a period to target a class, paste content, then I'm going to do open bracket, I'm gonna type in background, colon, and then we'll say gray and semicolon. So now you can see that there's a gray background on every content piece on our website because we targeted the class. So now let's target specific blocks on our website. So blocks are assigned to every unique content block that you have across your entire website. So we could look inside of Google's code visualization tool here, uh, but what I actually want to do is use the block extension and it will actually just pop up the block code for me. It's super handy. And so I'm just gonna copy uh, this one here and this is gonna edit the uh, text up here. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste it right there and it already has the hashtag applied to it. So we're targeting the block. I do open brackets and I'm just gonna type in background. We'll just do gray just so we can see the change here. So now you can see that because we had the block ID selected there, it just very easily copied and pasted the block there. So if you're wanting to target specific blocks, I really recommend using this extension if you can. And the cool thing about this is because we just edited this block here, whenever we go to any other page on the website, so let's say that we go to this contact page here, you'll notice that it didn't actually update the background in the heading here. That's because it's only editing that specific block that's linked to that specific page. So there you go. That's a quick overview of using CSS in Squarespace. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to learn more about Squarespace, check out our Squarespace tips and tricks video, which you can find by clicking the link below. I'd also like to thank S&E Web Design and Inside the Square for their fantastic CSS videos for Squarespace. If you really want to dive deep into nerdy topics like this, I definitely recommend checking out their pages. Feel free to subscribe if you want to learn more about building a website, marketing, or just general productivity. We'll see you next time.